Hello all, this is Halloween, and if you love cemeteries and haunted places as much as I do, you may want to subscribe because I'm going to be taking you somewhere new every week. This video will be my second video in my Louisville, Kentucky short series. I'm thinking about perhaps just ending it here because we did do some other things like going to the Louisville Slugger Museum and things like that, which I could make another video on if you wanted to. But it seems that those of you who love my channel tend to like more the haunted places, ghost investigations, cemeteries, and things like that. So I'm just going to kind of try and keep it real with you guys and um, do more of that kind of stuff. And of course, food places to go while you're visiting Louisville and things like that. So to kick it off with uh, this week's episode, we're going to be going to the Eastern Cemetery in Louisville, Kentucky. This particular cemetery has a really dark history. And I'm going to tell you about that as we walk through the cemetery today. Enjoy. We're here at WW Cousins in Louisville. We're going to grab a bite to eat before we hit the Eastern Cemetery and the Highlands. It's kind of like a fast food joint. It's not what I was expecting, but I'm giving it a chance here. Ordered a burger. We were looking online before we came here about this place and my husband picked it. He thought this was a salad bar. This is actually a burger fixin' bar. So here you've got all your fixins. Onions, pickles, tomatoes, lettuce, any sauces that you want on your burger. So that's kind of cool. And then up here is where you order. And they got all kinds of sandwiches, basically. Burgers, chicken sandwiches, fish sandwiches, cheesy fries, just all kinds of stuff there. So, it's kind of cool, I guess. <laughs> just not what I was expecting. <laughs> Today, we are at the Eastern Cemetery in Louisville, Kentucky. It is the most overburied cemetery in America and has a pretty dark history. This is on 28 acres of land and on record, there are 16,000 burials here, even though there are 138 documented bodies that have been buried here. So the history behind the cemetery, if you watch a documentary called Facing East, it is about the Eastern Cemetery and it talks about the really dark past. The original owners of the land and the cemetery thought they were gonna start documenting who was coming to visit their loved ones and which grave sites were not getting visited. And the ones that weren't getting visited, I guess dependent on how many years it had been since they had been visited, they would excavate those bodies out of their graves and resell the plot or bury on top of another person that was already buried there. So it's pretty sick. You can see just how overgrown it is. It's a stark contrast from the beautiful Cave Hill Cemetery we visited yesterday. So there was a time when it was so bad that people would walk through here and come to visit their loved ones and they would see bone fragments just laying in the grass uh, next to the graves. People that maintained the cemetery were told to just cover it up with a tarp 
so that people that came to visit couldn't see it. But they were finding bone fragments, they were finding like jaw bones, femurs, you know, just laying around here in the grass. So I would suggest, if you haven't yet, watch Facing East, a documentary. I believe they, it came out in like 2019 or something. It's a really good documentary on the history of the Eastern Cemetery. So you can see just how overgrown it is. I don't believe I've ever been to a cemetery that was in this poor of shape. Now, when you watch the documentary, there's a crew that comes here and I believe they're here today. I might try to, you know, ask them some questions, but they come, they're co they come here periodically to try and maintain the cemetery, but it's so overgrown that I guess that's hard to do, you know? but they are trying lots of very old headstones here. The first burial in the cemetery took place around the 1840s, was the first documented burial on the property. They actually had to hire an archeologist to do an archeological dig of the cemetery. And that's when they discovered that there were all of these bodies that were buried on top of, and just all these extra bodies that had long been forgotten. So here's the cemetery today. It's a shame because Kentucky is so beautiful and even though our beautiful trees and it's a really pretty piece of property, I mean, I would say there's probably even snakes in here. It's really tall grass. You can see that it's hilly, but nobody is caring for the grounds. Um, over here looks like they've cut some trees or trimmed some trees around here I better be careful I don't like snakes Wow they are still entering people into this cemetery too there are some recent burials here I, I wouldn't bury any of my loved ones here I mean it's pretty bad and that grass is about as tall as me so I can't really get down in it it's really strange to me because on the documentary it said that it was now being cared for and I'm not seeing it I'm not seeing it at all it's still very overgrown and very poorly maintained a lot of the tombstones have been damaged um, that one there is completely broken off. And I'm like some cemeteries where they find it and at least lean it up against, it's, it's gone, it's just missing. So there's not usually crickets that you can hear in the daytime, but it's so gr overgrown. There's like crickets out here, you know. This cemetery is open 24 hours. So if you were an investigator, you wanted to come into the cemetery and do a little investigation, uh, ghost investigation or whatever, I would think this one would be pretty haunted, if it was haunted at all. Just because of the dark history and so many additional burials that should not be here, I would imagine there's a lot of souls that aren't at rest because of that. I'm trying to be careful, man. I don't want to get bit by a snake. I got boots on. But I bet it would bite me through the boots. You can see the potential. This, this cemetery could be beautiful, but it's probably hard to get down in here too with the headstones with a lawnmower. I'm gonna try and take some photos of some of these headstones because the headstones are really cool.
appears someone's been living here. This is towards the back of the cemetery here. There's a whole, there's a building here. I don't know what it is. And then there's a whole other section behind this building. That's not a ghost, that's actually a person. It's just a small section of the cemetery behind this building. It's kind of strange. It borders the Cave Hill Cemetery. And the difference <laughs> is astonishing. I saw this stuffed animal and I thought it was a person sitting there. Big old stuffed dinosaur. Just sitting there in the back of the cemetery. It has a little sticker that says Weird Louisville on there. It's weird, that's for sure. Hi. Pretty cool back here, huh? Yeah, like, you're not expecting to see anything behind this building. First time you've been over here? Yeah, we're from Florida. Oh, yeah. Did you see that one stone over there? Uh-uh. Oh, yeah, you gotta see that. That's where everybody comes back in. Oh. Yeah. I saw, I got distracted by the dinosaur I know, over here. I know. I, I don't know what that is, but... So, she was uh, uh, supposedly... The rumor is, you know, I guess you could look her up, but a yeah, black magic kind of a witch. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. We got the pentagram, see? Ada Armstead. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, the pentagram on there. And see what it says at the bottom? I'll live again. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She probably does. She probably wanders the cemetery. Yeah, right, right. Anyway, uh, yeah, that's the, that's the big reason a lot of people come back here. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So are they, I mean, I watched Facing East. It's the documentary okay. about I, the cemetery. I haven't seen it. Oh, it's really good. Oh, that's it's cool. the most overburied cemetery in the United States. Really? Yeah. There I, are six, I can believe it. Look at yeah. it. Yeah. There's 16,000 documented burials here. Wow. Even though there are 138,000 actual buried bodies here. That's how many? Yes. Oh, my Lord. They, oh, because of the crematorium? or The crematorium was excavating bodies from their graves and reselling the plots oh my god or burying bodies on top of the existing oh bodies my gosh, man. they would doc they would make documentation of any of the graves here that didn't get any visitors and they'd resell those plots wow mm -hmm. they had to hire an archaeologist to do an archaeological dig to yeah. to find and identify the bodies so that's why this place got shut down basically yeah is because of foren the forensic part in it, it Mm -hmm. It was a mess. Wow. Must have been so many lawsuits come out of that. Yeah. I mean, I had people, no idea the history on it. Yeah. yeah. They're still burying their loved ones here. Yeah. And it's really poorly, the blocks, poorly right. maintained. Oh, it's horrible. Did you see that coming in? Yeah. I, don't, I mean, it's not being maintained. I've never seen it this bad. I'm sure maybe it has in the past, but I've yeah. never seen it that bad coming in like I did. Usually, they uh, it'll grow up some. And it's not, you know, great landscaping, but to come out and they'll keep it cut down. Right. You know, stuff like that. But There's supposed to be, um, like, a group of volunteers yeah, that are think, coming through and starting to do that. Yeah, I think that's what uh, but, I saw some of that, yeah. So something's changed in the last few months, the last yeah. year or two. Yeah. I think the documentary came out in, like, 2019, but you should watch it. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm going to. Yeah, Facing yeah. East is what it's called. Facing, Facing East. East. I had a really good chat with this gentleman who is back here he's actually originally from louisville now lives in indianapolis but he's here visiting you know the cemeteries and i guess just visiting louisville so i wanted to take a little footage back here you can hear the crickets kind of going off you don't usually hear that during the day it's like an evening thing it's more down here really hmm. this is kind of strange I guess that's still part of East. Oh yeah, there's a little cliff here. Oh what? It's like a little cliff. You look down there, there's more burials down there. Wow. Looks like it's it, you know, in a ditch. Burials down there in a ditch. You see the headstones. That's pretty wild. Look at the beautiful willow tree. From this angle, you can definitely tell that the cemetery does have a lot of potential. And I hope that one day, 
they bring back the integrity of the cemetery. They're working at it. I've seen the volunteers today. I think they're working from the back up because this whole part right here has been mowed. The grass is cut. Um, and up front, you just, you can't walk through the cemetery because it's so overgrown. But that willow tree is just beautiful. It's huge too, really big. That'd be a nice spot under the willow tree. I'm this guy has a problem with me taking pictures. Looks like he's mowing the graveyard over there. Probably part of the volunteer group. We're getting ready to leave the Eastern Cemetery. This is the only niche here behind me. Just wanted to say, if you are planning on coming and visiting the Eastern Cemetery, wear comfortable shoes, probably some kind of a boot so that you can walk up, you know, to the, to the tombstones a little bit better and get, you know, get to see the beautiful headstones that, that are here at the cemetery. We are headed out of the Eastern Cemetery. I recommend stopping in if you're in town. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you know that when my husband and I go on our little excursions, we go three places we've never gone to every year. So we travel quarterly and have these little short trips. Four days is plenty. <laughs> I gotta get back to my kitty cat. We always stay in a haunted hotel we seek out ghost tours and cemeteries and any haunted places uh, that are in the area. On this trip to Louisville, Kentucky, we stayed in downtown Louisville at the Seelbach Hotel. A little back history is that brothers Otto and Louis Seelbach, formerly restaurateurs in the Louisville area, decided in 1903 to expand their entrepreneurship to the hotel industry. They wanted to open a hotel and they ended up doing so at the corner of Walnut and 4th Street there in downtown Louisville. Now today, Walnut Street is called Muhammad Ali. So they erected this beautiful Baroque style building on that corner. Now while in the building process, they had imported a lot of their materials to build this establishment from all over the world. And in 1907, the Rathskeller Room was built and it was constructed of primarily Rookwood pottery, which is a rare pottery stone. That room is believed to have the largest collection of Rookwood pottery in the entire world. So it's really a sight to see. It's so beautiful. It's a Bavarian style room. You can rent it out for special occasions. And then if you get the chance while you're staying at the Seelbach, this guy, Larry Johnson, who's been working there since the 80s, he's quite the relic, but he's awesome. And he knows everything about the Seelbach. He was there when the first ghostly experiences occurred. Larry Johnson even wrote a book called The Sealbach. So if y'all are interested in getting that and finding out the history of the Sealbach, it's basically a centennial memoir of everything that's gone down there since the hotel first opened in 1905. For the ghostly encounters that have taken place there, one is that of a young woman, aged 24, named Patricia Wilson, also known as the lady in blue who roams the hallways on the eighth floor patricia wilson was found dead in one of the hotel's service elevator shafts and she was reported as having long dark hair wearing a long blue dress newspapers reported her death at that time as a suicide or an accident evidently patricia wilson had a rough life and had moved from oklahoma with a traveling salesman to louisville and was kind of left loyal but abandoned left to fend for herself financially and everything so she had no choice but to become a lady of the night at that time and the details of patricia wilson's death remain a mystery to this day but since her mysterious death new details have surfaced regarding the incident that happened in 1936 leading skeptics to believe that her death was no accident her name 
was not even Patricia Wilson. They believe that to have been her Lady of the Night name that she went by. Her actual name was Pearl Elliott. Pearl Elliott had been working the area for some time and one fateful night in 1936, there was a general visiting the area and staying there in the hotel and his name was General Henry Dennert. A hotel guest got disturbed. He was in his hotel room minding his own business and he hears arguing going on in the hallway on the eighth floor. And he goes out to check out what's going on and evidently this general was arguing with a woman with long dark hair wearing a long blue dress. He thought to himself, okay, I'm not gonna get involved. I'm gonna go back inside my room or whatever. And then he hears more of a fight breaking out and then a woman screaming. And he goes to check what's going on once again. And all he can see is the general running towards the elevator where Patricia Wilson was said to have last been seen. Pearl Elliott, of course, was her real name, but um, she was known by Patricia Wilson. From this witness report, others um, kind of theorized or surmised that this woman was actually pushed to her death by this general that was staying there. So it is believed that Pearl Elliott was haunting this place probably because newspapers and everything had reported her taking her own life or even it being accidental and she wants this guy held accountable. Almost a hundred years later, I'm sure the guy's not even around anymore. But it's quite the sad story of a young woman who just really had kind of a rough life and couldn't catch a break. It's also believed that the reason for this altercation between the two of them was that this guy owed her money and he wasn't paying her and so she got mad at him, wanted her money, was demanding her money and he got equally as angry and pushed her down the elevator shaft that night where she fell to her death. The last spottings of this woman was in the 80s and ironically this is kind of when, when the truth was starting to come out. When these other witnesses from that night were starting to come forward and say what they believed to have really happened. We kind of think that perhaps since the truth came out and she's known now to have not taken her own life or for it to have been an accident, that she's kind of more at peace now and maybe doesn't haunt the building as much as she once did when she wanted the truth to come out. I guess we'll never know. She's actually buried in the Evergreen Cemetery and she is in section 12 of the Evergreen Cemetery. We're amateur ghost investigators, so we just got some equipment. We, we took a REM pod into the Sealbach Hotel as well as a spirit box and we went next to the service elevator where Patricia Wilson, AKA Pearl Elliott, was known to have fallen to her death. And we did a little session there. We also did a session in the Oak Room where Al Capone and friends used to hang out and gamble at a time when it was illegal to do so, to have speakeasies and, and gambling and all of that stuff. There was like a secret room there in the Oak Room that actually had secret passageways. They'd get word from somebody downstairs alerting them to the police being there. As soon as they got word that the cops were there, they would escape down these secret passageways. And we did a little session in there as well. Enjoy. Right now we are walking through the halls of the Sealbach Hotel famously haunted by a woman in blue and there have been reports that in room 810 or at least there was one report that in room 810 which is right down the hall from us there a man has been seen peering out the window so a woman and her new husband, they had gotten married here and they were staying in that room for the night. And they reported that she woke up in the middle of the night and saw a man standing at the window and peering out of the window. Elevators here at the Silbach are very small. And on Saturdays, it's crazy with weddings here. 
We are on the second floor now. I think I took some footage of this earlier on, in the beginning of our stay. There's a gym back there. Hotel guests can use. Piano. It's a beautiful hotel. Look at the molding up top. It's got that sort of wave molding. We're gonna go in here and try to do our investigation. Again, it's a, a bit of an amateur investigation. We're just trying to learn how to new, use our equipment. But here in the Oak Room is where Al Capone would actually hang out when there were a lot of gangsters, you know, kind of flooding in. He would hang out here in the Oak Room. And there's actually a room off to the side over here that they would um, be gambling in. This here is a secret door, which used to lead to the tunnels down below the city. And that's where they would escape. And there was a button downstairs that the hotel worker would press to notify the gamblers up here in this room that the cops were here and they were looking for them. So they would escape out this door here which I just showed you the other side of it. And they'd go down into a, a underground tunnels and just escape to get away from them. So you see there, Mr. Al Capone. Whoa, he's in the closet, he's hiding. Now, uh, so this is where Al Capone actually hung out a lot uh, back in the day. I'm actually gonna try and use this new equipment we got. It's called a REM pod. If there's any spirit activity, it actually has a metal bar that comes out of the top. If you've seen it, um, it's been on some shows. In order for it to go off, something actually has to touch this bar here. Any entity can touch the bar and make it go off. Are there any spirits in this room right now? And if there are, could you be so kind as to touch that bar? and let us know, or get close to it, and let us know if you are here. I personally think that Al Capone is probably at peace, and he probably doesn't really haunt anywhere. Oh, it's, it's going, it's making noises. Are you able to light up any of those other colors on there? Like get closer to the bar? Maybe the pretty blue light or the, I think there's a green one or anything like that. We're new to this, so we don't know. Is that the REM pod? Yep. That's definitely, it's going off. Is there a spirit in this room right now? Can you make that noise again? If there is? Maybe I brought bad mojo. Walk out. You don't like my husband? Is that it? If there's a spirit in this room right now. Oh. Okay. <laughs> He's not in here anymore. Oh, huh. well, he's not in this room. Wow. Are you somebody who knew Al Capone? Are you able to light up another color on the REM pod? If someone is here, can you touch this bar to light up? Any of the other colors? Wow. I guess I just got chills because that's wild. I don't I don't know what that can mean. Am I speaking with Al Capone? 
By chance? We mean no disrespect by being here. We're just... wanting proof of the life beyond this life, if that makes sense. And you've by far exceeded our expectations. Should I move the REM pod closer to the edge of the table, perhaps? Would that help you get to it? Can you make that sound if the answer is yes? Should my husband stop with the spirit box? Because that's making noise. I'm going to move it closer to the edge of the table. Will that help? If there's someone with me here right now, are you able to light up any of those other colors on the REM pod by touching that metal bar or getting close to it even? Hmm. Well. The Oak Room is where a lot of really famous people would hang out. Francis Scott Fitzgerald and a lot of the gangsters of back in the day that we know of. And if you touch the wall, the wall paper, it's actually a soft padded wall, which is, is kind of wild. It looks great. It's, it's just stretched fabric over a soft padded wall so but the oak room is a beautiful room and mostly all original like all the woodwork in here the columns everything's original this was a billiards room and it was where a lot of the gangsters would spend their time gambling and you know entertaining or they would be entertained i should say by ladies of the night that'll lead us into our next little investigation the ghost of the lady in blue who is known to haunt the Seal Block Hotel. Just to give you an idea of just how beautiful the place is. It's, it's, and there were so many beautiful places here. I highly recommend a trip to Kentucky, Louisville, to the Seal Block. Visit the Brown Hotel. That's all original oak. Hence the name, the Oak Room. It's just beautiful. They're always playing good music in here. This little bar here. You can hold events here. If you wanted to rent the room out, you could rent the room out. There's a little bar here. There's a little room in here for guests and another bar. The ceiling is amazing. The ceiling at the seal buck. So there are only two reported sightings of the lady in blue. And this took place back in the 1980s. So the early 1980s, 83, 84, when people actually witnessed this entity. Behind this silver door here, is the service elevator. Where she was said to have committed suicide, but the story is actually quite different. She did not commit suicide. Years after her passing, people surmised that she was actually murdered. My husband has a spirit box over there. We're still trying to figure that out. We've got the REM pod right here. We're gonna see if Pearl Elliott is here. No, it's him. <laughs> <coughs> If she'll let us know she's here. Paul, if you are here, just if you wouldn't mind to touch the silver bar here on the rim pot. And it'll light up those beautiful colors. And if there are any messages you would like to give, you can uh, message us through the spirit box. So this is the service elevator that she's believed to have been thrown 
uh, out of to her death, the doors were pried open the night of her death, and she was tossed out. Her body was found the next morning. I think she's at peace now because she she knows now that people know that she did not commit suicide, although nobody was ever held accountable for her death. She was a lady of the night. Pearl, if you're here, can you make a noise with that REM pod? Can you light one of the colors up on the REM pod? If there's anything you'd like to say, would you be able to say it through the spirit box? All you would have to do is just even come close to that metal bar there and you'll be able to light up any of those other colors. Just like this. There's that same noise we were hearing in the billiards room. I know that now you're at peace because you know that everybody else knows that you did not die by suicide. That must be a great relief. Someday I'll go and visit you at the Evergreen Cemetery. Are you able to make a sound again with the with the REM pod? Was that you? We're getting ready to. Is making a bit of a sound. Are you trying to communicate with us? Do you want us to leave? Okay, we'll leave. Would that make you happy? Thank you, Pearl. Thank you for communicating with us. If that in fact was you. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me again today. There was a couple things I wanted to mention about the Eastern Cemetery. And one is that the volunteer group there is called Friends of Eastern Cemetery. If you do live in the Louisville, Kentucky area, you can, I'm sure, sign up to volunteer. They need all the help that they can get to clean up the cemetery. If I lived there, I would do it. So I just wanted to give you that information. All volunteers are welcome. There was a volunteer there just on his own volition who was cleaning up as we were in the cemetery as i was leaving the cemetery i always do kind of an exit video we're leaving now you know all of these things and he comes running up to me yelling at me basically just real irate this man oh you just want to take a selfie in a abandoned cemetery do you and i had to shut off my camera and he comes up to me and he's like, don't take any footage of me. I don't want any video of me or my truck. And I'm like, whoa, <laughs> hold up there. And I explained to him what I was doing and that I was not there with any ill intent. I told him that I do have a YouTube channel and I go to these cemeteries to tell about the history of the cemetery and all of these things. But it kind of dawned on me that perhaps there are people that are in these more abandoned cemeteries that get tired of people sensationalizing the whole abandoned cemetery thing. I'm sure there's a lot of teenagers that go in there, you know, and they're trying to, you know, see if there's any ghost activity or get their Ouija board out, just things like that. If you're out there and you go to these abandoned cemeteries, you really need to be mindful and respectful of the people that are in there. Some of them are there just trying to maintain. These old cemeteries have been abandoned. They've been abandoned by the community. They've been abandoned by the city. They're just not allocating funds for the maintenance of these historic cemeteries. They're 
paying for everything else, you know, new bridges, new roads, which is all great and everything. But some of the folks that, you know, are trying to at least volunteer there, it irks them when somebody comes in and they're not being respectful. And it would, it would irk me too. Towards the back of the cemetery, there was, it looked like there had been a squatter there, lots of garbage and stuff. And I mean, when things like this are happening, it makes it almost impossible to maintain the cemetery. So this guy was really mean at first, like he didn't know who I was or what I was doing. So I introduced myself, told him what I was doing, and he ended up apologizing. And we ended up talking for about an hour and he was pointing out some really um, significant burials there, like the Bascom burial and um, that guy had like a, you know, a whole bunch of really important, like he was a really important dude. And he did a lot of really cool stuff in the community, really a pioneer. Just make sure you're being mindful of those around you and people that are caring for the cemeteries. If you see somebody who's maintaining the cemetery, it's not a bad idea to go up and introduce yourself and let them know what you're doing and why you're there if you're not there just visiting a family member. And that way there's no hard feelings. If you loved this video, please remember to like, subscribe, and share. That does it for today's episode. I'll see you next time.